talk in the session. And um, uh, our next um, our next speaker, uh, uh, Ludovica uh, Benito, um, hopefully, uh, speaking on teaching NLP with bracelets and restaurant menus. We've had probably the longest title and maybe the most intriguing title in this session, although there was the one with flamingos and hedgehogs yesterday. So there's a little bit of a contest there. We should have a poll or something. So in any case, I apologize. Ludovica, please uh, take the floor. Okay, uh, thank you uh, so much for having us here. I hope you can see my screen and everything works. Uh, so uh, I'm presenting a dissemination workshop we designed uh, for the Italian Association of Computational Linguistics. Uh, now, not that uh, I really have to mention it to, to this audience here, but NLP is actually at the intersection between uh, two very misconceived uh, subjects, namely computer science and, uh, and, and, uh, and the, the study of, of language uh, at large. And uh, the general public um, is, um, is often uh, not, um, I mean, it's, and, and NLP is often unknown by, by the general public, but at the same time, the field um, has grown incredibly in, uh, in the last few years, and many tools are now actually available for people to use, like chatbots and, and vocal assistants, uh, while people are not really aware of the, of the underlying mechanisms of, uh, of these tools. So um, then why uh, it's a workshop for young students. Uh, we um, chose young students as a target because uh, for, for two main reasons. The first one is more of an um, awareness reason because as I was saying, uh, NLP tools are now, um, are now much widespread also in, uh, in, uh, in Italy. Uh, but usually uh, students don't know how, how they actually work, what's the role of data. So we figured that uh, uh, understanding technology uh, would be an asset also to use it um, in, a, in a more responsible and critical way. On the other hand, um, NLP is not really known. So students often get to it by chance because they have some elective at some point in their, um, in their university career. So we started from high school because um, we also wanted them to know that NLP is an actual, is an actual subject uh, that they can choose for their uh, university uh, studies. Uh, so the, the whole uh, activity run in Italy, we targeted students between 13 to 18 years old and the general public uh, as well, I mean, older, older people as well that wanted to uh, participate. We adapted it to a variety of uh, time slots from, from 30 to 90 minutes. And we ran it both on site and uh, online uh, because of the COVID-19 situation. Um, this is the general structure of uh, the activity that we that we run. I'm giving sort of a broad uh, of, of, of overview of how it works, but then, as I was saying before, we adapted it to different venues, so uh, we cut something in some uh, in some occasions and so on. So it was uh, composed. It is still composed um, by five um, five sections. The first one was a sort of an icebreaker section uh, where um, the idea was to uh, demystify common misconceptions about linguistics. So typical questions like, will a, will, will, will a linguist help me if I have pronunciation issues or how many languages do linguists, uh, do linguists speak? And this sort of questions that the general audience usually raises. Uh, then introduce linguistic as um, the study of language in an actual scientific uh, sci sci scientific way, and finally introduce computational linguistics, both as an engineering oriented field and as a um, as a purely scientific uh, field field of of study. Uh, the second section uh, was uh, was concerned with computers' ability to hear. And the, um, let's say the main idea was not to focus on hearing so much, 
but to show that computers do not necessarily solve tasks the way we solve them, meaning that they're simulating rather than replicating our abilities. And uh, when it comes to language, the concept is itself on what is easy and difficult has to be has to be revised because what's intuitive it's not always easy and uh, and 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 vice versa. So we took vocal assistants as um, as an example since they're becoming so popular and basically involved students into games. The first one uh, in the first one we show them um, hearing illusion uh, just to one, uh, highlight the idea that hearing is not just processing audio for us humans, but involves um, a whole lot of uh, other aspects uh, going from uh, like vision and perception um, in general. While for, for computers, we introduced uh, hearing just as a pattern matching, uh, as, a, as a pattern matching task. Uh, then the, the last part of this, uh, of this section was concerned with uh, variability and the ability of computers to adapt to different kinds of language, which is typically something that, at least, at, at least for, uh, for Italian, uh, they are not really able to, to do yet. So uh, we asked students to guess the participants, uh, the, um, the um, I mean, we, we gave them some audio clips and asked where, where do the speakers uh, come from? And they were able to not only to uh, perfectly recognize the speech, of course, but also uh, the, the region of the speaker. And this was, this was just to show that, um, that we are very flexible while computers typically are not. Then uh, the core of the, of the game uh, was concerned with, with reading. So we took uh, inspiration from one of the Linguistic Olympiads game. And the idea was to introduce reading as finding an ordering for some given words, which is what basic language models do. Uh, and this allowed us to introduce probability and the need for uh, linguistic evidence to compute those, those probabilities. So we, had a, we gave them a bunch of words in a mysterious language and they couldn't, of course, make any sense of, of the words. So we had to give them also a corpus in this mysterious language. And based on the corpus, we introduced this, um, what we call the bracelet algorithm, because the way uh, they built the sentence was uh, just how they would thread beads onto, onto a, a, a bracelet. So what you do when you thread beads you choose which one is the one you want to start with. And after you have chosen the first one, you go on choosing the one that go well with, with the ones that you have already placed. And this is what you also uh, do with words. When you have a corpus, you choose the, you choose the most likely uh, word to begin the sentence and then look for co-occurrences co to go on and, and build up the, the rest of, of the sentence. The third, uh, the, yeah, the fourth part had to do with grammar because none of this has, um, has any grammar in it. It's just counting uh, occurrences. So in order to introduce grammar, we use the menu um, metaphor. We show them this menu. I apologize, the uh, meals are in Italian, but I guess you can get, <laughs> you can get the uh, idea. So we show them this menu and ask them to come up with a grammar that was what the owner of, of the restaurant had in mind, where he or she had, had written down the, the, the menu of, of that day. And we show, they, they came up with some uh, a, a, a examples, we helped them, of course, and we show them that with that grammar, uh, they could actually check if a meal came from that restaurant or from the restaurant uh, on, on the other side of, 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 of the street and also generate new meals. So if tomorrow the, the owner of the restaurant wants to have new ideas, he has his grammar and just has to, to create uh, a new meal. And then we went back to the corpus because the corpus that we had uh, given to them had also um, parts of speech and syntactic categories uh, tagged on, on it through colors and these uh, little red, red letters. 
So we asked them to write a grammar based on the evidence that we gave them. So for instance, they had the um, uh, purple equals yellow plus blue rule. That was the sentence equals noun phrase plus verb phrase rule, which is very common in, uh, in Italian. And after they had all the rules, by, uh, by means of the tree algorithm, uh, they could generate again uh, 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 a sentence in this mysterious uh, language. Uh, then we had some wrap-up uh, minutes where um, participants discovered that this language was actually English or Italian, depending on the venue. And in order to, uh, to, to do this reveal, we had some plexiglass uh, sheets that you can see here in, on the picture that could be uh, superimposed on, on the corpus so that they could, could see just the same corpus but uh, translated in the right language. And so they could translate the sentences that they had produced. And we discussed a bit about pros and cons of the two algorithms and uh, limits of uh, both of them and uh, so on. Then um, at, the, at the end, uh, we had a becoming a computational linguist section where we just gave them some overview of technology and some uh, ideas about how to get to computational linguistics in a very broad and, and, relaxed, um, and relaxed way. Uh, why are we presenting this, this thing here, even if it's not mm, closely related to teaching? because we think it can serve as a blueprint even for other languages and even for other contexts. We also did it at an uh, o, o orientation day in, uh, at, at university. The materials are available in a, in a repository which was presented yesterday during the poster session. And I'm anyway um, available to share them if you need. The organization is very flexible, so you can also take just one of the sections and uh, reproduce just, just that one. Of course, there are some language specific choices that we had to make. So uh, if, you want to, if you want to port it to a different language, then uh, something would need to be, to be changed. And uh, finally, let me just uh, thank all the people that have participated in this process and uh, especially people and cats and uh, especially the Italian Association of uh, Computational Linguistics who has uh, supported us and funded us for, uh, for these all three years. Thank you. Oh, well, thank you. That was terrific. I'm doing my virtual, my virtual applause uh, again. And um, well, that's, you know, this is wonderful. Um, and I, I know that you know, for me, it was really interesting to see kind of an outreach effort to, to younger uh, people, you know, this 13 to 18 year, year old group, which is not a group I think about much, but I, I think what you're doing is really important because, you know, I, I get college undergraduate students who think natural language processing means that they're going to have to manually parse sentences, basically. I mean, it's, it's, and these are 19, 20, 21 year olds. So, um, uh, questions, uh, any, any questions, uh, just raise your hand and we can include you here. Um, yes, Marco. Hi, thank you for, for this talk. I also saw the poster yesterday and I, I really liked that. I was wondering, did you actively reach out to schools to, to get hold of, of students or how did you recruit your participants, so to say? Um. So uh, let me get back to the actual slides. Okay, uh, so we started with a science festival. Uh, basically, it was uh, in 2019, it was called Bergamo Scienza, and it was a science festival. It, it was organized, uh, like it ran for two weeks in slots of one hour and a half. So each day there would be like three, uh, three slots of this, of this uh, uh, workshop. And the schools could um, could book one of the one of the available slots and come with with students. And students would stay with us for the whole hour and 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 a half. Um, then we also reached one school specifically, which is the Budzi High School, because they had a sort of um, um, afternoon program on artificial intelligence. So they asked us to um, to 
I mean, to, to have our, our activity within their, their program. And the others are all science festivals online, unfortunately, because we, I mean, nothing is running in Italy. Um, no, nothing has been running this year and last year, live, I mean. Uh, but yeah, in general, I mean, we chose science festival because it's easier. There's an organization behind them that gets in touch with the schools and does all the bureaucracy and things. But in principle, there are also a lot of associations that are directly getting in touch with, with high schools and, uh, and proposing their, their activities. So it's possible. Thank you. And um, let's see, Manex, uh, uh, please uh, yeah, go ahead and raise your question. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, and thanks for the presentation, uh, it's, it's a question regarding the, because you mentioned that, uh, so you didn't say that you, you were doing like several exercises with the students and you didn't tell them that this was about uh, language. And then at the end, you, at the end you tell, tell them, okay, so all these things that we did, they were about English or Italian. How, I was just curious, were students very surprised when they heard about it? Like, oh, it's, it's it. So, um, so they knew it was about language because we clearly told them that they were dealing with words and that those things were sentences, even if, I mean, we told them a story like these are aliens talking to each other and uh, uh, we, we don't know their language. So they knew that the the broader aim was language. Then, yeah, they were kind of surprised that it was Italian, but on the other hand, it was also surprising that most of them figured some basic things, for instance, that shorter things were uh, coordinating, uh, co coordinating uh, words or uh, pre pre prepositions. So by, I mean, some, some students, for instance, had recognized like uh, the, the verb to be just based on looking at the corpus and, and looking how, how it was, uh, how, how, how the distribution of the strange words uh, was going around. So uh, yeah, I, I think they kind of, I mean, they, they have enough understanding even if it's masked. We gave them it in a masked, uh, in a masked fashion because we wanted, of course, to get rid of, of semantics and to simulate the, the, I mean, the process that the computer actually does, that it's just processing symbols without access to, to meaning, at least in the I mean, simplest uh, version of it. Well, that's great. And let's, um, and I guess we um, uh, have a question from Yov. Uh, would you like to yeah, voice your hi. question? Um, so yeah, so it's a really fantastic uh, work. I'm just um, trying to kind of get a comment, like, do you see it more as an NLP course or as a linguistics course? Um, and like, how do you kind of uh, put the line between those? Um, we, we didn't. I mean, we just, uh, we, we, kept it all together because they basically have no, uh, I mean, they don't even know that there's a distinction between the, <laughs> the two things, so. No, like, like, is this teaching NLP or is, it, or is it this teaching uh, linguistics primarily? Uh, so, mm, I mean, mm, it's difficult to answer because we working, I mean, we, we are working, we were like six people and, um, uh, two of them, Lucia and Roberta, they are trained as linguists. So, I mean, their, their way of seeing NLP is mostly from linguistics. Mm -hmm. I'm sort of in between. Alessio is probably more on the NLP side. Malvina, which is here, I think, is also probably in between. So, uh, yeah, we, I mean, we, we kept it more linguistics because going more NLP would probably have meant more coding and we didn't really want to uh, put uh, computers in the classroom because it was our first experience and mm -hmm. we didn't know um, how much, uh, I mean, since it's a science festival, so we, we got students from technology high schools, but also students from classics high school that studied like Latin and uh, ancient Greek <laughs> and those sorts of things. So, I mean, it's NLP in the sense that um, 
you're seeing language in an automatic agnostic way and just processing uh, just processing what you see. But yeah, in a way, I, I guess you could say it's more on the linguistic side. Yeah, that's, it's because like, um, I think it's kind of really great, but I, I kind of also think like if you can do like a follow-up course, you can then kind of branch up into two, two directions, right? One of them would be kind of taking it to linguistics, which is also uh, in some aspects of it kind of um, analyzing language in this way, right? Uh, mm -hmm. Which is um, kind of symbolic and, um, and then in the other side kind of to do it like more to the like NLP stuff, uh, with more programming in them and i'm kind of really curious like how this thing would look like uh, but any but anyhow what you did is kind of really really nice and um like uh, even kind of uh, just for uh, exposing people to linguistics it's really fantastic so yeah it's great yeah 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 thanks a lot we are thinking about how to go on uh, for for the next activities yeah sure i mean we'll we'll look at both sides yeah, yeah. Well, that's great, and yeah, keep us posted, of course, and uh, uh, and well, wonderful, wonderful work. Let's let's thank our speaker again, and uh, uh, we'll we'll uh, do another transition here. Uh, we are 